Hey everyone! So I know I've mentioned this before, but from the months of I think about September until late February, I was on a houseplant no buy. And the main reason for that was just I felt like I had too many plants and I was just getting plants that I didn't really love. They were cluttering up my space and it was taking a lot of time to take care of them. And I didn't want to spend a lot of time on maintenance of things I didn't really love. So what I decided to do was ban myself from buying any houseplants over the winter, which is when I typically purchase most of them because I'm stuck inside and not in the garden. My attention turns back to the houseplants and there's a bunch more that I want to go get every time we go to a garden center. Um, so during that time, that doesn't mean I wasn't creating new plants because as you can see right now, I'm surrounded by not even all of the plants that I propagated this winter. So I counted and in total, I had 14 new plants from that time period of September to February when I was on my plant no buy. And because they were all done through propagation, they cost zero dollars. Now that doesn't mean I didn't buy some new pots for the plants, so it wasn't really completely free, but I generated a lot more plants of plants that I loved because they were ones that I kept in my house, mostly through water propagation. So I thought it would be fun in today's video to show you all of the plants that I did propagate and just talk a little bit about the method I used to propagate them. So what I'm gonna do is clear off this space now and then I will kind of bring the plants in um, probably by type or plants that came from the same mother plant and just go through that whole process. The first thing I wanted to show you though is the plant that I broke my houseplant no buy for, which was for the polka dot begonia. So you have recently seen me paint myself like this. I had known since the last time, the very first time that I did face paint that this is the plant I wanted to paint next but I did not own it. And then when our local garden center that I go to most frequently posted they had them in stock, I had to run down and get one. So I think it was a good plant that was worth breaking the no buy for. But let me now show you my actual favorite plant that I have propagated. So my all time favorite plant and the plant I propagated the most this winter is the string of hearts, specifically the variegated variety because it has pink little heart-shaped leaves. And honestly, I couldn't ask for anything more out of a plant. I'm really surprised that this is something that actually grows in nature. So this is my absolute favorite plant. And then I have the non-variegated string of hearts here as well, which I do love, just not quite as much as the pink variety. Now, these two I propagated in a similar method, which was I basically water propagated some long vines from the mother plant. And speaking of that, I've only ever purchased one variegated string of hearts that started in just a little four, actually might've been smaller than four inch pot, maybe like three to four inch pot that I got online. And then I've also only ever purchased one regular string of hearts plant as well. And from that, I now have, let's see, I propagated six over the winter. I have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 total or no, 13 new, 15 total plants that all started from just those two. So like I was saying, these I propagated in a similar method. I put the longer vines in water, removed a few of the leaves, wait till the roots are about an inch long. Then I pot them in the soil. The soil is moist when I pot them up. And then I wrapped the vines around so that that way, as they started growing, it would be a bit thicker up here. And then they start trailing along the edges because something that I've kind of realized as I'm, oh, actually there's another string of hearts. So that's 16 total plants. Um, but something I've realized is I have a lot of plants with long vines, but they're not very thick. So what I'm working on now that I definitely have more string of hearts than I need is just thickening up the plants themselves. So that's how I propagated these two. I've been spraying the top uh, almost every day, pretty consistently. Um, one thing you do want to be careful of is not overwatering string of hearts, but I have found that I need to keep them more moist than I normally would, especially on the top where the nodes are touching the soil in order to get them to start propagating. So these are the two larger ones. And then let me bring this box over here, which is reflecting the light. So let's take that lid off. But basically, I think I made a video with these, but these I all propagated using the butterfly method. I'll link the video down so you can see exactly how I did it. But basically, let's bring this one up. You cut off two 
leaves at a time. So each node you cut off as individual pieces. You just stick them on the wet soil, keep it consistently moist. I put it in this dome, which worked really well. I have failed at this before, I think, because I had it too humid. Um, but what I liked about this is it comes with little air vents so you can pull those open and let some fresh air in. And I think that worked really well. So now these using the butterfly method are already starting out thicker and fuller on the top. It's gonna take longer for them to get long and trail down, but I really like how thick these are. So I am super excited about these four specifically that I have here. I have a larger one that is variegated. I have two that are regular and then another smaller one that is also variegated. Um, so those are the string of hearts that I propagated this winter. Um, next, let me move on to what is probably the easiest plant to propagate. So if I had to pick the easiest plant to propagate, it would definitely be the pothos plant. Similar to the string of hearts, I've only ever purchased two of these plants and I propagated three over the winter. I have my two originals and then I have a bunch of pothos, also philodendrons behind me in the plant curtain. I think that one is a philodendron, not a pothos, but essentially they are very easy to replicate in your home. So I have this smaller one here, which is in this colorful pot. I have this one here, which there's only two vines in it, but one of them is very long. So that is something that you can choose when you're propagating is this one long vine. I could have potentially cut it up Again, making sure there was just a node that could go in water and then some leaves on the end. I probably could have gotten, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, potentially six new vines out of it. They just would have started off much shorter. So if you want to start with longer vines, you can. If you want to create more vines but shorter, you can do that as well. These, I also just remove the leaves, put the node in water, wait till it's about an inch long for the root, and then pot them up. Similar to the string of hearts, I do keep them more moist and I typically would, maybe for about the first like two to three weeks, um, but I don't spray the tops like I do with my string of hearts because there's nothing that's right on the top of the soil that's rooting in. The roots are buried within the dirt itself. But after that, I just go back to regular watering and I don't think that I have ever lost a propagation of a pothos plant. I'm trying to think because sometimes I'll, use, I'll lose some of the string of hearts vines, but I don't think I've ever lost anything related to the pothos. And then very similar and also incredibly easy, I pro propagated these to philodendrons, specifically the philodendron Brazil. I have one parent plant, three additional propagations, so I probably have four total plants now. And again, I have some of those vines in the plant curtain as well. That's where the majority of my vines go. But those I would say are the two easiest. So if you're new to propagating or nervous about it, or you're just trying it out, Start with these two plants. They will definitely give you confidence to continue propagating some others. Um, so next, I only have actually two other types of plants that I propagated. So I will show you all of those next. For my final three plants, I have two snake plants, which actually came from the same mother plant, and then also a part of my original aglunema. Um, so for all of these, I did not water propagate. I just did a simple division. And actually, I think I did this in a video. I think they're all in the same video. So I'll link that below if you wanna see the exact process. But when you're dividing something, you simply just remove it from the mother plant and then immediately plant it into the soil. So there's no putting it in water or any sort of other medium. I just put it directly into these pots. Again, similar to the other plants, I will keep them more moist than I typically would for the first few weeks. But then after that, things are pretty simple. Um, for example, my two snake plants here, the original ones, I would water maybe once every three months. Um, these I'll water once every two weeks, especially because this one's in a very tiny container, but I think it looks cute. Um, so I water these about once every couple weeks, and then I'll eventually cut back on the water once I know that they are more rooted in. The aglionema, this is pretty much, I feel like, on the same watering schedule as the mother plant, which is, well, no, I'd say I water this one for sure once a week. The other one can be every one to two weeks. I just check and see how dry the soil is. But this one was drooping more at first than any of the other ones. In fact, all of the other ones looked fine and healthy the entire time, but this one, I was afraid that it was not going to make it because the leaves were just 
really sad looking. But since then, it has definitely rebounded. And this one right here is a new leaf that it put out since I propagated it. So that was really exciting. But that is, I think, all of the 14 plants that I propagated. And it's definitely what gets me through the winter because I just get, I feel like so antsy for the garden, which usually I'm starting seeds in about a few days, which is exciting, but I don't really get out into the garden until mid to late May, um, other than some cool weather crops. But I need something to distract myself when it's freezing cold outside and I'm stuck indoors for four or five months out of the year. So propagating plants is a great way to do that. I think for the most part, I am gonna keep all of these in my home. I might give away some of the string of hearts to friends just because I have way more than I can display. But that's also fun to do too, is propagate your plants and then give them away to people in your life. So I think that is everything. If you have any specific questions about how I propagated some of these plants, let me know. I will link down below the videos that I do have where I actually show myself propagating these. Again, I have these three and the string of hearts for sure. Um, and other than that, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video.